The Quran verse, or ayah, is only used to highlight a point and is not synced to the exact time it was revealed to the Prophet wasallam. Further in-depth background could be added to this story, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Jazakallah He who was exiled. In the heart of the Arabian Peninsula was a small place called Mecca, where the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was from. My Prophet, Prophet Muhammad. It was a religious checkpoint where all the major religions and even idol worship was represented. Mecca was run by chiefs who were heads of the Quraysh people, which were broken down into smaller tribes. Their power stretched far and wide, and they were the ones who primarily partook in idol worship. Well, my prophet, Prophet Muhammad, was not a fan. Even though he was a part of this tribe, peace and blessings be upon him. Some years had passed since Islam was introduced in its raw form, and it was still not as well received as the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had hoped. Tribal leaders wanted him dead, people were still reluctant to join, and the early believers had to flee because of persecution. Fast forward into the years when he and his followers and tribe were finally released from sanctions for his preaching, and at that time, Mecca was a lucrative religious town. The tribes paid offerings to their gods who apparently varied in capabilities, and were many at that, a part of the religion that made the chiefs and elders very rich. And to protect this influx, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, his message, and as well as his uniting of the disadvantaged, became a little bit more than a nuisance. All he wanted to do was promulgate the oneness of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the people held their post and rejected it due to their loyalty to these idol gods. And greed could have played a huge part and did. He further agitated the chiefs by renouncing the idols as just statues, consequentially jeopardizing his tribal protection. But they couldn't do what they wanted to do to him just yet because he had family ties to some of the main tribes of Mecca, the Banu Matalib and the Banu Hashim. But in general, the tribe's tolerance for him was wearing thin and was almost at its tipping point. The chiefs of the Quraysh and their followers further tried to discredit his name at the least, even ordering him to cease and desist his preaching. But the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, reassured them he would not. And when his protector and uncle, Abu Talib, chief of one of the tribes, passed away, the levy of protection he had broke and washed away all his ties to the Quraysh leaders. They rubbed their palms together at this opportunity. The wall of protection they were waiting for came tumbling down. And with lack of a better word, they sicked the proverbial dogs on him. The prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, knew it was time he fled. But not without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command, of course. And so behind the knowledge of the tribal leaders, with careful preemptive planning and the confirmed safety of him and his companions, they set their sights north to Yathrib, ultimately evading a historic ruthless attempt on his life by order of these old Quraysh chiefs. But they underestimated his elusiveness by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And besides, <laughs> that's another story. With the clothes that covered him and his trusted companion, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, he snuck out into the Meccan mountains with the backdrop of a silhouette of his hometown behind him, becoming ever and ever distant. What he felt, I can't say, as he climbed through the terrain en route to a distant land, all for the establishment of a destined Islam. Even still, he was pursued by the order of the chiefs to make sure he doesn't reach Yathrib, a place we now call Medina, where the first Muslim community awaited, banished from his very own homeland, thrown out 
from the place he was raised in, only to rise even stronger by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was he who was exiled. Peace and blessings be upon him. I give you Surah al nam 6, 4 to 5. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. But never did a single one of the signs of their Lord reach them, but they turned away therefrom. And now they reject the truth when it reaches them, but soon shall they learn the reality of what they used to mock. This is law. Zakla here.